Ike after this. I don't mean to ask you to put you on the spot to say, tell us what's going to happen in the future, but tell us what's going to happen in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Hello, hello, everyone. I am excited for another episode of Keep Leading Live. I am your host, Eddie Turner. I work with leaders to accelerate performance and drive impact through the power of facilitation, executive and leadership coaching, and professional speaking. Keep Leading Live, like the Keep Leading Podcast, is dedicated to leadership development and insight. This week, we are coming to you every Monday, but we change the time when I'm able to get a big guest like I am today. I change the time. It's not our normal time, but I'm moving for people like my guest today who I can't wait to tell you about. I see that I've already got one person who's uh, chimed in, so I want to encourage you. I want to say hello to LaCris Smith, who is in Houston, Texas, one of uh, the top IT developers here in Texas. Uh, and project management, I believe, as well. So hello, Chris, LaCris. And I, if you're listening, please let me know that you're here like LaCris did. Let me know you're here and where you're from. And I'm going to encourage you to ask questions uh, actively. And then if you like what you're hearing, hit like. So we know you like what you're hearing. And go ahead and hit that share button so that you can uh, let your friends watch and tune in with us. Or they can at least watch the replay if they missed the conversation. I want you to follow me on social media if you're not already doing so, and my guest today. You want to follow my guest today. My guest today, you're looking at him right there. The <laughs> world's number one CEO coach. And that is Mr. Mark Thompson. And that's a pretty common last name. So if you're looking for him, you're looking for Mark C. Thompson. <laughs> I get lost all the time trying to find myself, my friend. So uh, thank you. <laughs> it is so good to have you. Let me just tell people just a couple quick things about you. You are, as I said, the world's number one uh, CEO coach, but you're also the number one leadership coach for transformational growth, team engagement, and driving change. And your bio is very extensive. So I won't bore people by telling them your bio. I want you to tell us a little bit more about you and your impressive career. Well, I am so thrilled to be able to be with you, Eddie, first and foremost. The message you have is transformational. The message you have is really inspirational. You've really been helping people, I think, connect with their greater selves and have the kind of impact that they may have not even imagined themselves so they can believe in themselves in bigger ways. And that's that's how I roll. That's what I'm about. I. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've had the privilege of being able to help participate in the incubation and launch and development of, of great companies, large and small. I've more importantly had the opportunity to help be a part of the CEO coaching journey for the people who have been running or operating or being able to transform those companies. And so I've had the opportunity to work with Sir Richard Branson on many of his Virgin companies and, and develop and build and launch the Virgin Entrepreneurship Centers. We've done that here in Oakland, California with the J JFK Institute for Entrepreneurial Leadership. I've had the opportunity to develop the Venture Lab at Stanford, where I was a, a visiting scholar for many years, but really feel anchored in helping people find their, their greater selves and impact through the converting that career into something that has a global impact, to convert that passion into something that has a sense of purpose that outlooks you as an individual. So honored to be with you, Eddie Tay. It's truly, truly honored to have you, Mark. And 
you uh, left out some other important things about your background, sir. As impressive as it is, I mean, you you helped start Lyft, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I had the privilege of being the CEO coach for Logan CEO Group coach. and okay. uh, the CEO coach for the launching of, uh, of Pinterest. Uh, uh, Evan Sharp has participated in our programs uh, and my CEO summits. I've had the privilege of growing up at Charles Schwab and Company. Chuck Schwab is remains a dear friend and co-investor on, on many new ventures. I was there for the IPO of Charles Schwab and Company when that was a little guy and became <laughs> a, big, a big one. Uh, and uh, a real privilege to work with iconic leaders who've been making a difference. I got a chance to work with Steve Jobs, met him in high school and uh, didn't have the foresight to realize that he was going to create Apple. But later on, at the turn of the century, in fact, help uh, license the technology that's on everybody's phone today called the MP3 player. The reason you could listen to a podcast and many of these shows today is a technology that I was a part of a company called Realport that pioneered. So a real yes. person and a collection of iconic people like you, Eddie, uh, who yes. are making a difference. <laughs> yes, I'm glad we want to get that in because we're talking about uh, CEO, which, which I neglected to say, we're talking about C-suite coaching for unconscious bias. And I want people to understand this, you aren't just anybody who's talking about this. You have been in the C-suite as an executive yourself, and you've coached some of the top CEOs or CXOs, we'll say, because yeah. uh, you span the gamut, in the world. And yeah. you also have a New York Times bestselling book. Tell us the title of that, by the way. It's called Admired, 21 Ways to Double Your Value. So I think most of us here, anyone here on the program, please let give them a shout out if you feel like you are overvalued. <laughs> uh, any takers? Uh, I think the only person who's ever said he was overvalued was Mal Marshall Goldsmith. <laughs> I think it was just for the effect. Wherever you are in life, you aren't valued, admired, and respected as much as you could be. And part of what you're doing with the mojo that you bring, Eddie, is to help people find that impact and contribution. And when you talk about unconscious bias, it's something that lives and breathes throughout society in ways that are important to recognize and to learn from and to, to, to grow and change. And one of the things that strikes people the most when they visit Silicon Valley and the eclectic collection of voices from all over planet Earth, mm -hmm. I have the privilege of working with Aisha Evans, who was born in Senegal, trained in Paris, went to Georgetown to become a computer scientist and has taken all sorts of pushback. And, and, and as she's tried to disrupt and improve organizations for the better, uh, she just recently has sold her self-driving automotive company. That's really all about mobility in the 21st century, actually democratizing access to mobility and, and augmenting that with artificial intelligence that supports people and she sold that company to Amazon. That's a project that's now closing these last few weeks. Uh, she is an inspiration. She's one of the many different voices here in the Valley that are making a difference in creating permanent change in the way organizations run and the services that they provide. I think if anything strikes you more than anything else about innovation is it requires a diversity of voices. It, it requires that we are including voices regardless of hierarchy. Uh, Benita would talk about growing up in the Valley here during the space program. People came from 80 nations, 80 nations to come together on this mission to the moon. And so in all those different cultures and with all those different languages, it took that sort of what we used to think about as a collection of diverse voices uh, to come up with the discoveries that didn't even seem possible before that collection of people came together. It's that diversity of voices that is greater than the sum of any homogenous voice. You know? Absolutely, Absolutely Mark. And thank you for stressing that and uh, talking about Aisha, if I'm pronouncing her name right. She's now, the, she was the CEO of that organization and Still is. billion dollar transa transaction. Uh, so $1.5 billion dollar sale to Amazon. Jeff Bezos, Actually, the two Jeffs were on the onboarding call, which today, these days, is on Zoom, right? On, on yes. Video yes. Conference, we have to say, welcome to our family. We've never met. We love you. <laughs> you know, we're, but we we're just gave you a billion and a half dollars. <laughs> 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 Isn't that beautiful? 
And hey, listen, uh, the Chris agrees with what you're saying. He says, true, identifying our blind spots is critical to understanding how we show up. Absolutely. Yeah, we appreciate that. And uh, one of our uh, new coaches in the Houston area, Lisa, hey, Lisa. has joined us. Hi. Thank you for letting us know you're here. And also Lonnie Williams, a businessman here in Houston, Texas. So far, Houston folks. But we've got folks coming in from LinkedIn and Facebook to be part of the conversation. So okay. thank you all for letting us know you're here. And if you're listening, do what LaCris and Lisa and Lonnie have done. Let us know you're here. Ask questions of Mark. He is the top CEO coach in the world, and we're learning from him right now. Mark, you touched on unconscious bias and how it, uh, why it's important to have a diverse workforce to make those decisions to have those $1.5 billion transactions, uh, such as ISA has been able to enjoy. Can, for those who are tuning in and may not know really how to define unconscious bias, it's a term that gets thrown around a lot. How would you define it? Well, I th I'd say that you've uh, been able to really help people understand that the reason we call it a blind spot is because we don't see it. And, and we need to have the humility to recognize that the majority of what we experience in a day is not something that is a deep expertise that we have. And that the reason we, we partner and team with a, a group of people for an organization and for a cause is so that we can collectively have the viewpoints and ideas and the intelligence that comes from many backgrounds to lead to better and deeper and broader insights. Otherwise, you're just talking to ourselves in the mirror all by ourselves. Why do we hire all these people? Why, why are we hanging out in this organization if we're all the same? Then all we're going to be is our own echo chamber, which ends up being a big problem. And so I think that's where unconscious bias can flourish is when we don't have the humility to realize that we have them that a blind spot by its nature means that we can't see it. So we need to be open enough to learn, to be shown, and have the patience with ourselves and others to accept those differences. I think that's probably the biggest difference I see with innovation is that the innovator's dilemma is you really kind of almost always end up wanting to talk yourself into something that you get complete agreement from others on. That's more comfortable, right? Hanging out with the same sort of ideas and folks. And to make a change and to make things better, you have to get a little bit out of your comfort zone, I guess is what I'm saying. Absolutely. Uh, Aisha would say that you you have to have this, this combination of hubris and humility. The hubris would be the part where you have the ambition to say, we can do something great against all odds which is audacious on the one hand is what an entrepreneur is saying. We can create something new and permanent and bigger than ourselves. That, that takes a little high self-concept uh, and a leap of faith on the one hand, but then have the humility to realize, you know what? I don't know how to get there. I can't get there without you and you and you. That, that is so true. And when I, when I think about your example earlier, Mark, and how you, you, you talked about the, the impact that this has had, and just that one organization. But when you look around and you're talking to leaders and you're, you're on many different boards of many organizations, do you see any reticence to really adopting this awareness? Or do you see people are pretty much uh, coming to, especially today, coming to a new awareness? I think we're definitely coming to a new level of awareness. Uh, and I think the the desperate need for that new level of awareness is, has been incubated by the fact that it is not a natural act for most people uh, to try to get comfortable with what you don't know, with, to try to get comfortable with ways of living and life uh, and challenges that aren't your own, that aren't in your own ecosystem, that, that a lot of life is lived with inertia and habit uh, and, and pretty small circles of influence. And this is about the opposite of that. I guess to be a coach, you and I would have the belief that people can grow and change and grow beyond what they may see as visible. Otherwise, they would have had either the courage or the insight to do it already. And, and so I'm always so inspired by the people who choose to be coached mm -hmm. because what it's saying is, look, I'm vulnerable 
but I also have some hubris. I, I, I know I can get better, but I, the only way I can get better is to, to learn what I don't know, uh, rather just reinforce what I do know. So you're right. I don't, I think it's, I'm not sure that that's a natural act for everyone. It's a, it's an act of courage. Yeah. And that's an interesting way of putting it. It's an act of courage because it's, it's, it's comfortable to just kind of yeah. stay where we are. Much right? more comfortable. <laughs> but, and, uh, and it's safe. <laughs> in our, so, yeah. it's in our little safe ecosystem, in this little cocoon, we don't realize how small those are, even though they may feel global. This is the thing that can be, I think sometimes challenging with social media is you think you're now global with your point of view. And yet what you've done is just found more like-minded people around the world, which has certain benefits and comfort. That's nice. You need to be supported. You need to have some reassurance that maybe you're not crazy or that you have uh, you know, a deep passion for something uh, mm -hmm. that is, is worth loving or that you want to share with others. And yet it also can be just the self-reinforcing mechanism that doesn't allow you to grow or see new things that might make you uncomfortable initially. I know that for me, one of the first things we did with our daughter when we were world schooling rather than homeschooling, mm -hmm. my wife and I tried for 20 years to become parents, 20 years. on our tw Just before our 20th anniversary, we became parents. How about that? We're 43, both of us. What the heck did we know about this now? But I'm glad in a sense that we were given this gift later in life when we realized it was about introducing her to a world rather than just making her safe in hers. That to experience the full world, which is something we had discovered and had the privilege to be able to do later in yes, life. Because you truly are a world traveler. <laughs> You're your wife. So I you love this concept of world schooling versus, would you say homeschooling or did you say? Yeah, world schooling instead of homeschooling. Yeah, I love that. What a brilliant concept. It's your idea of this idea of having exposure to many different viewpoints. Yes. And uh, what, what Benita, who's an educator, uh, she's a doctoral fellow at, at Penn, uh, University of Pennsylvania. And um, what she would say is, and she, as she was the one guiding us through this incredible process, um, she would say that the love of learning is what's important for us mm -hmm. to get comfortable with which means that you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes. You have to be able to trust yourself and the possibilities of growth to see what the what you can learn and grow from from being open to new ideas. That's what learning's supposed to if if you knew all the stuff you wouldn't need to go to school. You wouldn't get trained, you wouldn't get coaching, you wouldn't be onboarded at a company. It's all about learning something you don't know. And, and of course, the problem is we don't know what we don't know oftentimes, so we feel like we're okay. <laughs> and that's more comfortable. It, it, there's a bliss to the ignorance, for sure. And uh, so what Benita and I experienced in our careers, which took us around the world, is that we were constantly being dropped into places where, you know what? People were having incredible lives, thank you very much. Not the same lives we were living. They were having community, they were having love, they were having family, they were having successful businesses, they were setting up organizations. They might be in, you know, where Aisha's from. I, I'd spent uh, this weekend on the phone with my friend Nankande, who's in my, uh, she's, she's one of my yes. mentor coaches, uh, yes. and she's in our, she's in our she's LPR amazing. process group. And She's from so, Zambia. She's in Zambia, and I, last yes. time I was in Zambia, I was canoeing down the Zambezi. Um, mm. And, uh, you know, Zimbabwe was becoming Mozambique or Mozambique was becoming Zamba. And there was a there was controversy and there was war going on. And she is transforming the possibilities for so many men and women um, in a place where it continues for her to be very rich in the opportunities to have a long term impact. And I could not be the same guy when I came back from meeting with people who were actually having beautiful lives. Mm -hmm. And so what could be learned from that? Well, you know, we actually just decided to be parents after we went to Africa the first time um, and, and realized that there was a whole world that we didn't know. 
and that we wanted to serve through. I think that um, there's been an opportunity for those who've ever had the, the chance to be in places where they're uncomfortable, where they discovered that they could be so much more Absolutely. when we're able to embrace that difference. Um, Absolutely. And I'll tell you, Nan Conde really gave me a new perspective when we we're having our conversations around COVID. I mean, talking about, you know, in the U.S., you know, you've got different resources and programs that were made available that, you know, that were kicked in to, to help and do a stopgap of sorts. And uh, she says, hey, listen, over here, we have these all the time. There is no government support. There is no help. Yeah. And she starts to walk through what it's like in the village. And yeah. that really made me think, wow, you know, so, so what am I doing and where am I at mentally even? Right? Yeah. But then yeah. also physically, what am I doing after talking to her? She's brilliant. She is. And you talk about unconscious uh, bias. Well, there's no frame of reference in which I could have visited that village until she took me there. Um, mm -hmm. um, in that case, metaphorically, but I've been to many. Um, I helped set up the in Johannesburg, the uh, Virgin, uh, the Branson Entrepreneurship Center and in, mm -hmm. in the Dominican Republic and in Oakland, California here. And I can't pretend to understand half of the greatest entrepreneurial ideas on this planet when they come in the door. Um, and they come from so many different worlds. I mean, literally ways of life. Yes. And how rich is that? That, that is what lifts all ships if we embrace it. Absolutely. By the way, LaCris is chiming in again. LaCris says, yes, it starts with a growth mindset. So we appreciate that, Chris, and that affirmation. Yes. That's and the we appreciate, yeah. Yeah, sorry, Mark. And we appreciate everybody else who's tuned in and listening as well. And what I want to do, Mark, is just take a, a very brief break and acknowledge a few people who have really been supporters of the show. I uh, acknowledge my sponsors who helped me keep things going. So I want to take a brief break here. And I want to talk about uh, Grand Heron International. Grand Heron is someone who I talk about uh, every week because what they do matters in the world of coaching and leader development. The key to sustainable leadership lies in the ability to thrive during uncertainty, ambiguity, and change. Grand Heron International brings you the Coaching Assistance Program, giving your employees on-demand coaching to manage through a challenging situation and arrive at a solution. Visit grandheroninternational.ca slash podcast to learn more. So lots of uh, good folks that help sponsor the Keep Leading Podcast. I uh, want to definitely mention them, though. Also, this month, uh, Starbucks. I want to mention Goldman Sachs, Progressive Insurance, Thrivent. We appreciate your support of the Keep Leading Podcast and Keep Leading Live. If you enjoyed the Keep Leading Podcast, please head over to Apple Podcasts and give us a rating. Write a couple sentences as a review so that your friends will know about the Keep Leading Podcast. We certainly appreciate your support. So I am talking to Mark C. Thompson today. He's ranked the world's number one CEO coach. Didn't mention this earlier, but should have said it. He's one of Marshall Goldsmith's 100 coaches. He's in the Thinkers 50. He's a New York Times bestselling author. He's one of the top gurus in the world, as ranked by uh, Global Gurus. And he's on the Fast Company Impact Council. Mark, we should also mention that you have your own show. Can you tell us the name of your show? We do a series that's called the C-Suite Masterclass. That's C-Suite Masterclass. Uh, C-S-U-I-T-E Masterclass.com. And in fact, our latest one that ran this last Friday was with Venus Williams, who's been a longtime client and friend who was talking about finding your mojo to create that business, to convert that, that passion and to sense of purpose in the work that you do because she's been, I think, a great role model, not only, of course, in being an Olympian and a tennis legend, but also a, a leader in business. She is a CEO. She has been running a fashion brand called V-Star, 
uh, and she has a, um, a clothing line called Eleven, which is really talking about you think you're rated eight, nine, or ten. Well, she's an eleven. <laughs> that's what that's all about. And then she is. Yeah, and V Star is a um, a interior design and and transformation business. So she's had two very successful businesses. She's been a real estate investor. In fact, in the in the show that she did with me on Friday, and on the CSuiteMasterclass.com, she talks about how when she was just eight years old, dad and mom would play foreclosure tapes. <laughs> like, how, to, how to buy a foreclosure? It's like, really? Can you show me that now? She says, I got zero on that now. But what it taught me was you got to share what the values are, that you can help empower a person of any age to think about how to create a life and, a, and, and prosperity for themselves. Um, and maybe take control of their future because they said you aren't going to get that in school. In grade school, sometimes you don't get out of high school knowing how to offer an, open a checking account, let alone how yes. to buy real estate. So she said this is this is part of that self improvement. I know that for me growing up, um, I had uh, real challenges in my family. I had a father who wasn't around. I had a mother who had polio. She was in a wheelchair. I had a brother who had a brain injury at birth that we had to care for, uh, and I had a significant eye issue. Um, that made it impossible for me even to be reading well in middle school. So I had a significant trauma around learning and the experiences in learning, but then had to care for my family. So I didn't get to play sports in school. Um, I wasn't the first in my class. Um, it's really weird to have me described as a New York Times bestselling author or a Stanford graduate because when, you know, when I was in adolescence, I couldn't read. And so for me, it was sheer willpower. And, and I got thrown into having to care for my mom and my brother uh, and help keep a roof over our head as a janitor, uh, working my way through San Jose State University here uh, as a college student. And junior achievement ended up being a great plus for me and something Venus brought up because there are some programs like that. Ashish Advani, who's also in our MG100 group, is the leader of junior achievement. That's right. That's right. Really great programs mm -hmm. to help you learn what you're unaware of. Talk mm -hmm. about unconscious. There's just a whole set of worlds that we don't know about that we don't get at home or at school necessarily. We don't get it, right. that sort of reinforcement. So it's basically saying, I don't care how you old you are. You could also think about um, mapping a plan to, to make things better for your, for your world. Curtis Martin, the NFL uh, Hall of Famer, is in my LPR group, along with Nancy. Yeah, we had Nan Condi together. Well, you got the group, Mark. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> Every weekend, I meet with 50 of the world's top thought leaders. Nan Condi among them. I had the privilege. Uh, every weekend, we do seven programs with groups of six or eight in what we call forums, summits. And yeah. we go through our goals and objectives. And it's to help us really move beyond our bias and our what's unconscious. You know, how can we have people in a sense, maybe kick us in the unconscious bias areas. Yes. We can't see what we see. We need people that have credibility in our lives so that none can say, Mark, mm -hmm. you're not seeing all of this. And it's okay. And I could feel safe with her giving me that coaching. Well, Curtis Martin's in that group. Uh, he just launched his first private equity fund. He's a former football player. Hated football. Hated really? football. He learned wow. to play football because he discovered in school that he was running a heck of a lot faster than a lot of the other guys could dodge okay. and weave like crazy. And he had lost over a dozen of his friends to gang violence. Okay. Talk about other worlds that we haven't lived in. I haven't lost 14 friends under the age of 21. That's a reality in the neighborhood that he grew up in. And so he had to run to school. He, he would sit outside his mother's bathroom so frightened as a child as she would not be wanted for him to be out of reach for too long an abusive dad he learned he set himself when he realized he had this special talent he decided he would set himself because football could be his ticket out hmm. and then he was going to commit himself to a life of service so that's what he's done he has a foundation he has businesses that he's participating in he's doing the first um African-American private equity fund, where he's brought together some of the great thought leaders, celebrities, athletes with resources, and creating a community where they can invest in black entrepreneurs. 
Um, wow, what a powerful story. Just launched it this last week. You've got to give yeah. a shout out to okay. Kurt Martin for doing something that it's unbelievable to think hasn't been done at this pace ever before. So well, that's thank you for telling me. I, yeah. I can't wait to talk to him again. That's awesome. It's it's huge. Please give him a big shout out for that. I will definitely do that. So shout out to Curtis Martin, who's uh, doing some really great things. And thank you for t your own vulnerability. And then thank you for sharing the story, uh, his story, and that of uh, Nan Conde and Serena. I'm sorry, Venus. <laughs> and now there's uh, something you said. I want to make sure other people know who are listening. What does LPR stand for? Oh, I'm thanks. part of these with you, but yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is a discovery for us. I mean, you and I, we're so called, some people call us master coaches because we've been at this for a long time. <laughs> well, I, I think that all, all, all that means is I guess the biggest comp, the bigger compliment would be to call us master learners to find out what we're not conscious of and what we can learn more about. Because boy, I've learned more in the last four months than I have in the last four years. We've done two things. The process that Eddie's talking about is LPR, life process review. And there is in business, most businesses of any size develop, and many organizations do this as well, they, they set, set up a set of goals that they can measure because it's hard to really manage something that you don't hold yourself accountable for or have other people objectively holding you accountable for. So it's, it's the idea of you, you, you can manage what you can measure. So most businesses will get a group of the leaders of that organization together at all levels and customers and say, you know, what are our objectives? Where are we going? What, and how do we break that down in terms of deliverables every week, every month, every year? And so that's called usually a, a business process review. And that's something we heard from Alan Mulally, who's also a part of our group. He's the one who, who actually prompted this idea of having uh, our particular LPR. I have, uh, Jim Young Kim, who's the former CEO and president of the World Bank, is in our group, a physician. Um, so he, both of those guys are in your LPR as well? Yes. So every weekend, oh. I'm with <laughs> six I'm your groups. I'm on the wrong group. <laughs> I've got Kuber Jolie, uh, former CEO of Best Buy. Um, and it's, um, it's a remarkable group of humans. Uh, oh, who, wow. I mean, I can't be above anything they have to offer me, right? It's like, get over yourself, Mark. You've got to... This, you've got to really see the opportunity to learn here. And, and what's good about it also is that we rotate these groups in this particular method because there's always some new faces in the group. And that actually helps us not get too comfortable again. Yes. Knowing what, you know, you know what Mark's going to load on you this week because he did that the last six weeks. That's what Eddie yeah. did six weeks ago. But what if Jim is now part of it? What if Nankandi shows up? What if... Curtis Martin says, hey, look, on Wednesday mornings, I help people who are getting over addiction. And Mark, aren't you addicted to this sensibility? Is that really the, is that serving you and others? How are you showing up for your lady this weekend? You know, have you shown up for, for the loved ones in your life? Uh, so it's great to have powerful people in your life who you, you know, those loving critics is what I call it. We all have to have some loving critics. It Indeed. really gets into that growth mindset you were talking about, you know, people yes. get better. Well, listen, we're moving toward the close, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have any questions for the world's number one CEO coach, this is the time to ask it as we move toward the close. Uh, any comments, questions, drop them into the queue right here. Hit the like button if you like what we've been talking about with Mark C. Thompson. Hit the share button so folks can access it later if they missed this incredible conversation. Mark, what's the main message you want to leave our listeners with? I think that at every stage of our lives, there's an, a, an opportunity to learn how to be a better version of what you could become. I think that's what I've learned. I'm 62 years old. And I'm, as I said, learning more in the last four months of COVID than I have learned in the last four years, I think, because two things happened. I decided to join an LPR group and subject myself to the same damn advice that I give others. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, how many professors like say, okay, you sit, you listen. And as Marshall Goldsmith would always tell us, if you like the advice, say thank you. If you don't like the advice, say thank you yes. and how much better we can grow. I'm so much better coach than I was. You know, I've been at this for 30 years. I'm much better now than I was 
I feel sorry for all the people who had to work with me before. I could do it faster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better because I talk to you. So, oh man, well, it is truly my privilege to be able to talk to you, sir. Uh, you taking time out of your schedule to talk to me means the world to me. By the way, is there any specific uh, quote that you live by, or the best piece of leadership advice you've received that will help our leaders keep leading? Yes, I'd say that this is the being vulnerable to learning. This this meta message is really what is the secret sauce for all the greatest thought leaders. I think we think too often of a Curtis Martin or a Venus Williams or a Hubert Jolie or a Jim Young Kim that they've arrived. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The best news is that if you're doing what you love, it's the journey that matters and the quality of the contribution and that we can't be as dependent on the outcomes long-term that we can do our best. Suzanne Lyons, she's uh, chairman of the U.S. Olympic Committee. She's in our LPR group. She's a dear friend of mine. And then she had to, to, she was brought in just as interim CEO during all the terrible scandals that would occurred with the uh, U.S. Olympic Committee uh, around the treatment by doctors of, of the gymnastics team. And, oh, and, yeah. and so she came in and she's testified before Congress more than anybody you or I have ever known. And she did it talking about issues which were not on her watch. And she's not even a sportsman. And she feels like it's her duty because of all the incredible athletes and contributors and dreams and also identity of, of a nation that comes around being quality people and, and doing what's right uh, as a part of the Olympics, a way to bring the world together. And so she's doing it out of a sense of mission. And, uh, and, and she said, you know, there's not every case where I can solve it for everybody. None of us mm -hmm. can. My job today is to make things better than they were. Okay. And so that's what I believe. In. You, realize you don't have to be perfect to do something great. I like that. You and don't so, have to be perfect to do something great. That's, that's what I live by. And I think when you talk to the people who've achieved the most and who learn the most, that's how they live their lives. It's not about perfection, it's about contribution and service. So, and that's how you roll, Eddie. So I'm delighted to be here and please reach out to me. I'm Mark C. Thompson. You can reach me at, at mark at markcthompson.com and uh, or reach us looking at our C-suite masterclass, c-sweetmasterclass.com and uh, or take a look at our book, Admired. Uh, we're coming out with a second edition that by the way, I'm showing collaboration and partnership because my wife and I, who's my business partner as well, wrote that book in 2012. It was my only New York Times bestseller. And it's, of course, because I traded up on my partnerships. And <laughs> yeah, I got Smart the, man. Yeah, right. I married up, which is us also another little tip, although I think it's out of the scope of, my, of our lecture today. <laughs> so uh, we're writing a second edition of that, and it's about collaboration and, and how the, that if you really want to be the most valued, admired, and respected for what you do, Nobody does it alone. It's not about you. I love that. It's about Mark, you. Give me a lot of good others, right? Give me a lot of good feedback today. A lot of good content for uh, our audience. I, I appreciate you very much. And we're going to put how to find you in the show notes so that folks can just click on it and easily connect to you. We're going to build a page out for you because we're going to release this as a regular episode in a couple of months. And uh, I want folks to stay connected to you. Check out the C-Suite Masterclass where you've interviewed people like Venus Williams, Quincy Jones the other day, uh, just yep. doing some incredible things and uh, a true thought leader, a true heavyweight in the coaching business. Thank you again for being a guest on the Keep Leading Podcast and Keep Leading Live. Thanks, Eddie. And thank you for listening. That concludes this episode, everyone. Boy, I was just so excited to talk to Mark. This is uh, just another reminder that leadership is not about our title or our position. Leadership is an action. It's about activity. It's not a garment we put on or take off. We must be a leader at our core and allow it to emanate in all that we do. So whatever you're doing, always keep leading.